Cruise only took the role so he could do what? How much is he actually flying in the films, and why did he flip on his decision to never make a Top Gun sequel? Here's everything you never knew about Top Gun's Maverick. It's nearly impossible to imagine Maverick being played by anyone other than Tom Cruise. But as it turns out, another actor was actually offered the part before Cruise came on board. The part was initially offered to actor Matthew Modine, who turned down the role because he didn't agree with the film's politics. He went on to star in Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket instead, a role that remains one of his most memorable. Speaking with Salon in 2020, Modine has said he does not regret turning down the role in Top Gun all those years ago, despite what it did for Cruise's career. He explained, Cruise said that he felt that Top Gun was a movie about individualism and personal strength. I just thought the movie was jingoistic. While Full Metal Jacket is also about the armed forces, Modine maintains that it does not endorse the actions of the military, but rather indicts the regressive, violent values that these institutions espouse. For his part, Cruz told Playboy that Top Gun was never meant to represent the reality of the U.S. military and was created for purely entertainment purposes. When it came down to casting, Top Gun director Tony Scott relied on someone he could trust, a member of his own family. Prior to Top Gun, Tom Cruise was working on a film called Legend, which was directed by Tony's brother, Ridley Scott. In an interview for the 30th anniversary release of the film, Cruise recalled that he was first offered the role in the film in 1983, but he was in the middle of filming Legend. At this time, I was off in London working with Ridley Scott, who had just done Blade Runner. Though Legend wasn't received very well by critics, Cruise maintains that it was a hugely important learning experience for him and taught him a lot about the work that goes into making a film. Once he was done with Legend, though, Ridley Scott urged Cruise to look at the Top Gun role. At the end of 1984, Ridley said, you know, you gotta meet my brother, and he's gonna direct this film Top Gun. You know, it's aligned with things that I love, movies and aviation. By this point, Cruz was in a position to accept the role of Maverick, and the rest is history. So you're the one. Yes, ma'am. Tom Cruise and Top Gun producer Jerry Bruckheimer actually have pretty different stories about how Cruz came to be cast as Maverick. In an interview with Variety, Bruckheimer said that it took considerable effort to get Cruz to sign on to the film. He explained, We wanted Tom after we saw Risky Business, and he kind of hemmed and hawed. So we arranged for him to fly with the Blue Angels at the Naval Air Facility in El Centro, California. The pilots decided to give him the ride of his life in order to scare him to death. But as Bruckheimer tells it, this is actually what convinced Cruz to do the movie. But Tom Cruise has said this wasn't actually how it went down. And I said, listen, here's the deal. I'm going to make this movie. But don't tell him yet. <laughs> he claimed that the reason he didn't reveal his excitement about the project at first was that he wanted the opportunity to fly with the Blue Angels, something Bruckheimer was happy to provide for him. While Cruz admitted that he spent much of his first flight with the Blue Angels vomiting all over the cockpit, he maintains that it was well worth it in the end. It's a well-known fact that Tom Cruise takes his work as an action star very seriously, taking the time to really prepare for his roles and often doing his own stunts. In the case of Top Gun, Cruz did what one would imagine he would do to prepare for the role. He shadowed real-life pilots. According to Time, Top Gun is the nickname of a real military school called the Navy Fighter Weapons School that was founded in 1969 at the height of the Vietnam War. As part of his training for the role, Cruz shadowed pilots at the school. While there, Cruz reported that an instructor told him, There are only four jobs in the world worth having. An actor, a rock star, a jet fighter pilot, and president. Kelly McGillis, who played Maverick's love interest, Charlie, shadowed the woman her character was based on, Christine Fox, a woman who worked for the Center for Naval Analyses. In 2013, Fox was named Acting Deputy Defense Secretary by President Barack Obama, making her the highest-ranking woman to ever serve in the Department of Defense. What does Top Gun have in common with films like The Bling Ring and Hustlers, you ask? Well. All of these films were inspired by magazine articles. The magazine article in question was titled Top Guns, and it was published by California Magazine in 1983. The piece covers the high-octane world of fighter pilots. One element of the film that was clearly inspired by the article is the nicknames of the pilots. Though names like Maverick and Iceman were created for the film, the article explained that pilots were often called things like Yogi, Gringo, Gator, and Possum. While there's not a specific pilot mentioned in the article that directly inspired Maverick, the article goes into the intensity of the job and how many pilots lived for the glorious and terrifying thrill 
of flying Tomcats. These days, because Top Gun has made the real school so famous, students at the Navy Fighter Weapons School are actually fined $5 every time they reference the film while at the academy. I feel the need, the need for- Get out. Get out. There's one every year. I will not tolerate clowning. Tom Cruise isn't the tallest guy out there. He's reportedly around five foot seven, which means his female co-stars are sometimes significantly taller than he is. This happened to be the case in Top Gun, where Cruise starred opposite Kelly McGillis, who stands at around five feet, 10 inches tall. Speaking with The Oklahoman, McGillis recalled, well, first off, Tom and director Tony Scott and I really weren't bothered by the height difference, but apparently Paramount was. As such, measures needed to be taken for the scenes they shared to make them closer in height. I acted in my bare feet most of the time. I slouched a lot. My posture in that movie is appalling. McGillis noted that while she had a great time making the film, looking back, she can now see that she was trying to shrink herself more and more as the film went on. Nonetheless, the experience was something McGillis is used to. As she wryly recalled, there have been a lot of men that I've worked with that I don't wear shoes with. Unsurprisingly, given that it's a blockbuster sequel, everything in Top Gun Maverick is bigger and badder than it was in the original. There are bigger, faster jets, more realistic action sequences, and even drones in the new film. While all of these advancements were necessary for updating the film and aligning it with contemporary technology, it also meant that Cruise couldn't quite do everything himself. Though Cruise is an experienced pilot himself, Jerry Bruckheimer admitted that the Navy denied Cruise's request to pilot the F-18 Super Hornet jet that Maverick flies in the film. Despite this, Cruise took it upon himself to pilot every other aircraft he could. Bruckheimer told Empire, the Navy wouldn't let him fly an F-18, but he flies a P-51 in the movie and he flies helicopters. He can do just about anything in an airplane. In order to get around the fact that Cruise couldn't pilot the F-18 himself, producers engineered some pretty ingenious camera setups. Cruise was adamant that the film not rely on CGI, so instead, IMAX cameras were actually installed inside F-18s, while Navy pilots did the actual flying. I told everyone, if you're gonna take this role, part of it is being in that F-18. I don't know how to do it any other way. In the first couple of decades of his career, Tom Cruise was adamant that he didn't want to make sequels for any of his films. This all changed when he starred in the first Mission Impossible film, which spawned multiple sequels. According to Cinema Blend, he eventually decided that sequels could be a fun challenge for the cast and crew. For many years, Cruise was also similarly disinterested in making a sequel to Top Gun. In fact, in 1990, Cruise spoke to Playboy magazine about the possibility of a sequel, saying, Some people felt that Top Gun was a right-wing film to promote the Navy, and a lot of kids loved it, but Top Gun was just an amusement park ride, a fun film with a PG-13 rating that was not supposed to be reality. That's why I didn't go on and make Top Gun 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. That would have been irresponsible. This was 32 years ago now, so we don't blame Cruz for changing his mind on the subject since then. Just want to manage expectations. Despite Cruz's hesitance to sign on for a sequel to Top Gun for many years, director Joseph Kaczynski was eventually able to convince him. Part of Kaczynski's pitch had to do with the journey that Maverick would go on in the film, and the first step in getting the film made was to pitch the idea to Cruz himself. As Kaczynski told Deadline, I started the discussion with what I thought should be the emotional core of the film, the severed relationship between Maverick and Goose's son set against a dangerous combat mission that would take them both deep into enemy territory. As soon as I said that, I could see the wheels in Tom's head starting to turn. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Kaczynski went on to say that the latter half of his pitch revolved around what Maverick would be doing in the Navy at the time the film is set. Kaczynski also told Cruz that they were thinking of rigging cameras inside the cockpits of the jets. Interestingly enough, an attempt at that exact same filming approach had been made in the original Top Gun. Producer Jerry Bruckheimer explained to Empire, What's different about this movie is that in Top Gun, we put the actors in the F-14s and we couldn't use one frame of it, except some stuff on Tom, because they all threw up. So everything was done on a gimbal. But in this movie, Tom wanted to make sure the actors could actually be in the F-18s. According to Kaczynski, Cruz was immediately on board following the conversation, even going so far as to call up the head of the studio immediately after he heard Kaczynski's pitch. When the trailer for Top Gun Maverick was released, some fans were skeptical as to why Maverick would still be a captain in the Navy after more than 30 years of service. 
This issue is actually brought up in the film. Yet here you are, Captain. While this does address the elephant in the room, it doesn't actually answer the question of why Maverick is still a captain. This question became so controversial that the Navy felt compelled to provide answers. The Navy Personnel Command spoke with USNI News to speculate about how this turn of events could have happened. It turns out it is possible, but it's unlikely. One explanation would be if Maverick had left active duty sometime after the events of the first Top Gun film and spent several years in the Navy reserves. Another scenario would be if Maverick was retired but retained in service. This situation is unlikely, as most people do not serve past their mandatory retirement. But the Navy says it is possible. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.